this is actually we're going to start on chapter four. So this week we are going start on chapter four, and then next week when you have a quiz, a quiz of your chapter four. So actually you always do the quiz one week after the lesson. Okay, so let me record the lesson first. Okay, I think I will on and off record periodically lesson. So uh, oh, this is a recording started already, fine. It's good there. Okay, this topic chapter four is a short chapter. Okay, uh, so most of the time you'll be doing a tutorial or doing it this time. So what is this chapter about? Is calculus of vector value function. So what is mean by calculus? The calculus consists of two parts. Okay, one part is the differentiation. Okay, differentiation. Another part is the integration. So they are differentiation and integration. Okay, calculus deal with differentiation and integration. And now this time is a value vector value function. That means that the function is a vector now, okay? That means usually vector has an i, j, k component now, right? So you have have a, have i, j, k component now. Have i, j, k component, okay? So because usually function for our case, most of the time is a function of time. So usually this function is a component there. There's i, j, k component there. It's a vector. It's a function of time. Most of the time, most of the time, a function of time, t. Okay, so that is why you see that, okay, we can define what is the limit of rt. In this case, r usually represents the position of point at time t. So this one, rt is representing the position of particle, whatever it is, okay, position, of a point at time t. Okay, this usually. So how do you represent position of a point at time t? So you have a, a few points there. At different time, you get different point. Okay, so I mean, if I erase it, you can see that. Okay, this is how the point move, the direction of, of movement. I use arrow here. So arrow direction, so at different time, position are different. So at time t, uh, you can find that the position is here. Okay, so the position at time t is somewhere here. Okay, it, it gives you the direction here. At time t for this diagram, I think this is the usually the curve, the point move in the curve here. And generally at time t, you have the point at time t is okay. So define where so this is RT for example. Okay, RT at time t. So what happens when and t goes to a and t is very close to a usually okay this is a limit process now. So you can see that when t goes to a you have the red arrow there and this point L here is the limit. Okay. So L is the limit. Is the limit is actually a point right, in space. Now what happens if the R is continuous? So like this case, if usually if R is continuous, then L is same as R A. T goes to A. Okay. So usually L is R A when put T equal A here. So this is generally the situation when you look at chapter four. Okay, if you download the notes. So for this one is in the first diagram. Okay, so let's see everybody here. Okay, I think so one person missing. Okay, so maybe I should send John line a call first. See how is it, John? So call here. 
So all right, let's go back to the slide. I finished the first page already. Okay, I move on to the next, next page. So anytime if you don't understand, you can stop me straight away. Okay, so uh, this time I'm going to talk about uh, differentiation. Okay, before I talk about differentiation, okay, let me talk about differentiation somewhere here. The graph somewhere here. Okay, where is it? Okay, differentiation. Okay. Uh, I just talk about limit first for a while before we talk differentiation. So when you take the limit, you can take the limit term by term, right? So uh, this is just one of the term. When you take limit term by term, so this is chapter 4. I'm going to, I'm going to look at the limit and term by term. I think you got this one. Okay. For the number of page 1. Okay. This one. So how do you find the derivative? Huh? The definition of derivative is this one. Okay, definition of derivative. So let me talk about definition of derivative. It's page three. I think that inside the notes page two now. So definition of derivative. Okay, is here. So this is how you define derivative, right? Derivative function. It's very similar to talk about the derivative of a function of one variable. So if you recall the one variable, how to define f prime of t. In one variable, this limit of okay, f t plus h minus f t over h when h goes to zero. This is a function of one variable. Okay, so uh, t plus h first, then minus different. Okay, so you find that this is similar to what we do for one variable calculus, what is mean by f prime t. So you extend this definition to vector function. So vector function there, you have three components, IGK component and it for each component. Okay, so different way to tell the derivative like r prime is, is a way to tell the derivative, right? And then, uh, so this is how you look at the, when you say the vector is differentiable, it means this, the limit exists. Can you find limit here? So how do you visualize the differentiation of vector function? Okay, so on the same page there, okay, you can see this uh, and pull this away. Okay, let's look at interpret them one by one, right? So first of all, you find the difference between RT plus H and RT. So over here, I have RT here. So this is a vector RT, it means position at T, okay, RT. So the point is here now. Paper points in here. Then you find out what happened when you change the t to t plus h now. So you get another point. So this is r t plus h now. And you get another point, right? So this is another point. So where is different of this input point? So we take a difference here. So different. In this case, RT plus H minus RT, we've got this vector here. But I'll change this one. Okay, depend on how you move the direction. So a different the different graph with different direction. Okay. So depend on the graph is actually moved from this way here in, in increasing t direction. So move the graph going this way. This increasing the t direction. So the difference between RT plus H and RT is this vector. So this vector here. Yeah. Okay. So this is the curve move in this way in this in, in the t direction. 
How about if a curve uh, move uh, in the opposite direction, okay, then you've got different arrow, right? So this one is, a, we always try to move H positive, most of the case. What happens if H negative, then you get uh, the difference also, okay, you get different direction, okay? If you, you count, if H negative, right? if H positive, it increasing T direction. If H negative, this is decreasing H direction, okay? So you get this one. The direction opposite now. Okay, so then we know how to find a difference already. Divide this by h here. So your h are this. Your h goes to zero. So when h goes to zero, right? These two vector R T plus H and R T almost coincide. Okay, almost coincide. So it becomes single vector now. Okay, from here this. Is R prime T. Okay, almost these two vector find a different then divide by H, right? Then you got this vector R prime T. So R prime T is what you can see that this is actually tangent to the graph. Okay, tangent to graph. Geometrically, you can see the tangent to a curve. Okay, right? and the direction is in increasing T direction. Okay, in Increasing city direction. So it how how your curve move is actually if you curve on this, go this way, then it's increasing t direction. Okay, so basically, if you do r prime t geometrically, this is in the tangent to the curve in increasing. T dimension. Okay, so this, and you get this in H2. So now, let's see how to geometrically interpret this. Okay, so interpret this. Okay, this one actually is the same graph here, same graph to show you the situation. Okay, so then increasing okay, geometrically. R prime T, okay, the, the key, the key is this, I should say, when you do R prime T, we do differentiation, this is tangent to a curve, in the direction of increasing parameter, parameter means T, okay, parameter means T. So you know that this is R prime T, when you do differentiation, what you get, you get a vector, tangent to the curve at the point T. And the direction of the vector is in the increasing T direction. Once you do that, then you got the tangent vector. So from here, we are going to do a simple calculation. Okay, so there's an example one inside the nodes. Okay. Example one and so we go to example one and set only simple calculation. Okay, example one. Okay, uh, uh, example one RT equal to T squared I plus E power TJ plus two cosine pi T and five R pi T. So let's do this manually calculation. This is enough, okay? something very easy. So R prime T, right, is actually the other way to do R prime T is differentiate R. Okay, this is R prime T. Okay, and T have I, J, K component. So this is actually differentiate T square in the I direction plus differentiate E power t in the j direction, then differentiate that subtract here. So this is minus here. Subtract here, 2 cosine pi t in the k direction. Let's just differentiate component-wise. What do we need to go through the limit process, right? Unless the function is very special, then you have to do limit differently. Otherwise, just normal differentiation. 
So they get 2ti, then plus etj, and then this one, you be careful, okay, how to differentiate two cosine pi t. So differentiate cosine pi t, you get minus sine pi t. Okay, minus sine pi t first. Then using the chain rule, in differentiate pi t, you get pi. Then k, right? So in the end, this is actually 2t i plus e t j plus 2 pi sine pi t. K. Okay. So differentiate, just on the on that differentiate cosine a t. Then we get minus a sine a t. So this is example one. Okay, example one, which you can find in page four three. Okay, page four three. Then. So that's, that is all about the differentiation basically. Okay, just remember the rule of differentiation. Although, so there are some rule of differentiation after this. Okay, there are some rule of differentiation. Then, uh, like differentiation concern, you get zero. Okay, rule of differentiation. If the differentiation concern, you get zero. Is it? Okay, you differentiate a constant, suppose C is constant, you get zero. Uh, if you differentiate a constant plus R, times R, you get K, print out constant. And the usual speed addition of vector, you can uh, differentiate term, term by term. And then finally, uh, Then we can move on to another geometrical definition. Okay, so that's how we mentioned about tangent. When you do the up differentiation, you get a vector tangent to the graph. Okay, so this is R prime is tangent to the graph. Okay, basically. So in this case, how about how to find the equation of tangent line? Okay, so here we know R prime is tangent to the graph here. In the depend on the how the direction of move, you can see that R prime direction and the increasing increasing the parameter. So because this here this move in this way, so you know that the direction of R prime is moving upward, right? So there's a point of tangent to the to the graph here. Yeah, Apply is tangent to graph. Then, what we're going to do is find the tangent line. Okay, can you find the tangent line? Okay, so there's a, we are calling the tangent line. Okay, how to find tangent line? So in this case, we're going to talk about tangent line. Okay, now this graph here. Tangent line got the equation. So what is the equation on line? Okay, so let me see whether I can go this here. Okay. So usually equation of straight line we call okay, something we call after we can do a lot of exercise is we call the equation of straight line. Equation of straight line. In 3D, right? Because this is usually a 3D uh, factor got I J K component, but it's equation of three. equation of a uh, straight line in 3D. You have uh, this equation something like this: R T equal to R zero plus T V. Okay, R zero plus T V. So what does it mean? R0 basically is a fixed point on the straight line. So 
based on this picture here, so this is a straight line. So somewhere here, this, if I go into pick a point, let's say this point is fixed here. Okay, this point is fixed here. Okay, I, I, I use this one, this one. Okay, this one, fixed point. So I got a fixed point. Okay, this point R0 is a fixed point. What is it R0 here? Maybe we call it R0 is a uh, R0 here, maybe in this case, is R at T0. Okay, R T0 is R0 here, fixed point. So this is a fixed point. And then what is V here? V is a direction of a straight line. So in this case, there is a vector V here, somewhere here. This is a V here. V. Usually, you can take this one, velocity, V, okay? Direction of straight line. So there is a V here, direction of straight line. Okay, yeah, vector, huh? Vector, 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 dimension vector, okay, that's a dimension vector. Okay, dimension vector of a straight line. So let me write properly here. So this is dimension vector. Okay, dimension vector. No need to be unit vector, but I should tell, tell people this what is the vector, right? Dimension vector. So equation of a straight line, if you want to find the equation of, of this tension line, you can find that, okay, what is actually here? So let me extend the straight line a little bit here. Okay, extend a straight line. You want to find the position of straight line at any time t. Okay, let's say I want to find position of straight line at any time t. Let me extend a little bit here. So, no, I want to join them together. Okay, so join them together. So not very good. So not very difficult to match them. Okay. Okay. So let's say I have to get what is the that if at this point what is R T from origin? What is R T for this straight line? Okay. So R T is here. How how people get R T here? So basically. You can draw two parts here at the vector RT is this vector plus this vector. So that's why you can see that RT here is direction of straight line, right? Equation of a line now is actually RT0, which is a fixed y, plus a multiple of V. Okay, this because this green line is a multiple of v, right? So it's t plus multiple of v. Okay, so this is why you get r zero, and then this r zero here. That's why you get r zero here plus multiple of v. Okay, equation uh, straight line is this one, the blue one. Okay, is actually the green one. Uh, the yellow one first, the yellow one plus the green one. Green one is a multiple of V, that's why you got this equation. Okay, this is usually called the vector equation of a line. Okay, this is called a vector equation of a line. In this case, it's tangent line. This is called vector equation of a line. Okay, this is something you learn in AIM2, but probably you forgot already. So, the Becker equation, okay, of a line. This is something you learn in AIM2, maybe forgotten already. So, you know the equation of a line of two, three, four, actually. And you learn one of them, this is the vector equation. Also have parametric equation, if you want. 
and then write them in parameters equation. Okay, so this is how the vector equation will lie. Then you can use parametric form, okay? X and Y and Z, parametric form. So after this, there are some differentiation rules follow. Okay, they can actually uh, product rule. Okay, you can do a product rule for dot product, for cost product also have that. Okay, so this is product rule. Basically, one of them is, especially the second one, is product rule here. Product rule can also do for cost product and top product, okay? Also valid also, valid for also. Cost product. You know better you have two type of product here and top product. Later on you'll see that again. <coughs> so I assure you that the vector equation is this one R R zero plus T V. This is vector equation. The vector equation. So you can uh, make it in the parametric equation for example. This can be X T Y T Z T in terms of T now, is go X0, Y0, Z0, plus T of A, B, C, right? Let's say A, B, C is the vector, the function of T, V. So you can say T, V, T is A, B, C now. Okay. So that means that X is equal to X0, fixed point, plus T, A. Then y is equal to y0 plus tb. And then z, in this case, is z0 plus tb. Tc, right? So this equation is called parametric equation. Just like you did last time, right? or straight line. parametric equation of a straight line. So from here, and then we can actually do a sample of this thing, right? We can know how to find equation of a straight line. Okay, so far, very few, few in the plan, just a uh, explanation of all these things, how how to find equation of tangent line. So actually the thing we above here, about here is how to actually use this to find equation of tangent line. Okay, so I have show you the equation of tangent line, how to find how to find V, how to find R0, the fixed point. Okay. And then we can look up for first so first example now. Okay. So first example ready have you you have calculation will be example two. Okay, hopefully this one, right. Example two, right? Okay. For example two, example two, I have this example three, where's my example two? So example two is somewhere here. Three. Example three. Where is my example two? Okay, example two missing already. Okay, my example two missing already.
Ya, sama tu. Ya, okay, sama tu. Okay, find the parametric equation of the tangent line. So I want what now? I have this thing here. Parametric equation of the tangent line. Okay, of the tangent line. So don't don't confuse ah. Huh? So parametric equation of the tangent line. There are two parametric equations there. First one is the original curve. Okay, so RT, you can write them. RT for given to you, RT is equal to cosine T I plus sine T J plus T. Okay, this is not the tension line. This is the parametric equation of the curve. Okay. This is parametric equation of curve. Okay, this is not really the tangent line. It's parametric equation of curve. So, how do you find the tangent line at the point t equal to pi? pi? So the question I have is actually, I want to find the tangent line. Okay, parametric equation of tangent line here. So I want actually this equation of tangent line. Okay, so by this equation, I want parametric equation of tangent line at the point t equal to pi. Okay, so how to do that? First of all, let's do a differentiation first. Okay, in order to get tangent line, you have to find a dimension of a tangent line, which is equal to r prime first. So you find out r prime t. Okay, r prime t is equal to differentiate cosine, you get minus sine. Differentiate sine t. You get cosine t. And the first t, you get 1. Okay, then you put t equal to pi. So r prime t and prime pi now, you get minus sine pi i plus cosine pi j plus 1k. I know sine pi is equal to 0, so you don't need to worry about sine pi if it's 0 here. Cosine pi happens to be minus 1. So this vector is actually minus j plus k. This is a direction of a tangent vector, okay? So, vector tangent to the curve at t equal to pi. Okay? Vector tangent to the curve at t equal to pi. This is minus j plus k. Now, what is this curve called? This curve is called circular ellipse. Okay, we have name for this direction of this curve because circular ellipse. How does it look like? It actually look like a circle, but it's not a circle in the plane. You have moved up the plane, so you find that this is something similar to ellipse here. So you actually the movement of the curve it looks like something like this. Okay, so let's give you a uh, feeling of this one, look like. It's actually something like this. Go up there. Okay, so you move along the curve. You actually look like move like look like going into a circle, but it this not a circle on a plane it's because they are move up. Okay, you move up. So this is called a circular ellipse, just like the diagram I show on the right there. Okay, so you can find out how this thing look like. What is the increase in increasing 
t direction okay so i was going to show you this diagram again okay and copy this diagram to the next page and then show you the how people construct this graph okay so the graph you have x axis y axis z axis right so where is the x axis and y axis here so let me copy this graph here Okay, copy this one. I'm going to move it to the next page and do right. Okay, so how do you look at this graph? So where is the x axis here? So this one you can see that this is telling you that x equals zero is here. Okay. So x equals zero is here. Let me blow up a bit here. So let me, I can adjust the size of the graph here. So solution two. Blow up this one a bit. So you can see clearer. Okay, so this is the circular ellipse here. So this is x equals zero. So basically, the x axis is actually uh, this way. So let me show you. Here. X axis moving in this direction. So this is your x axis here. This is your x-axis. So x goes below in the center, one, and then two, for example, right? The other side is x equal to minus one, then minus two. So this is x-axis here. X-axis, uh, positive direction, and right? move to the right. And then uh, y-axis is actually which direction? So y-axis, uh, you get y axis you can actually show here okay, the y equals zero so you can get y axis here somewhere here so y axis uh, somewhere here okay y axis here so you want to draw y axis okay let me because the skill is it's difficult to see here so I get y axis here. Usually x and y axis are perpendicular. Okay, so uh, x equals zero. Okay, x equals, x equals zero somewhere here in the middle, origin. So actually is not like that also let me this x axis actually I move I move here so the center is here zero here okay this x axis here this x axis here negative x direction and then the z axis is go from the ground so this is the axis here, go from the ground. Okay, go from the ground here. Okay, so let's see how the point look like. So actually your point is RT equal to cosine TI K okay, plus sine TJ plus TK. Okay, this is a, the curve. Curve look like this. So when T equal to zero, where, where is it now? So T equal zero, you get cosine zero, I plus sine zero, J plus zero K. 
which is actually I, zero, zero. Okay, so this is a point at one, zero, zero. Okay, so you can find that the X value is one. Okay, Y value is uh, zero, and then, uh, okay, X value is one, Y value is zero, and Z value is zero. So this is the point, actually, let me see where zero here. When t equals zero, you get one, zero, zero. This, how do I get this one? This is one, zero, zero. Okay, maybe I can redraw again. Okay, let's say this one, zero, zero here. X equal to one, y equal to zero, z equal to zero. Okay, correct. You can see that your x equal to one, while your y is zero. Okay. Y, y is low here. Y is measured from here, right? So you can, Y is measured from here. So this Y equals low here. Okay, Y equals low. Z also, of course, is low on the ground. X equal to one. Let's try to find out what happened when, that, that is why you got this point here. Okay. That's why you got this point here. So let me, Okay, this point here. How about when R equal to pi, T, R pi now, R pi, right? So this will be cosine pi, I plus sine pi, J plus pi K. So this is actually, cos pi is minus one, sine pi is zero, and then pi K. So this is a point, minus one, zero, pi, right? So at this point, t equal pi, this is the point here. You can see from the point, the x coordinate is minus one, okay? The x coordinate is minus one. The y coordinate is still zero, okay? And positive is actually uh, from the, if you look at it this way, it's actually here, pi equals zero. And then the z is pi now. Okay, z is pi now. How far are you away? The move, move up the pi here, this pi here. Okay. So you have moved from one pi to another pi, this is how they move. And you get a tangent. From there, we find the tangent direction. The purple is a tangent vector. So purple one is a tangent vector here. Okay. Tangent vector. Tangent vector. The purple one is a tangent vector. How the tangent vector move? You can see a direction. Always move in the direction of a curve. The curve model is so this is a tangent vector now. Huh? Tangent vector is this way. Move in the direction of tangent vector. So now we slightly understand how the curve move, how this kind of curve move. So I got Tangent vector, I know really, I want to find equation of this tangent vector now. Okay, so I'm going to move again, move a graph again, okay, to show you. Okay, move a graph again to show you how to find the equation of a tangent vector. So, I insert a new page here. So I'm going to copy this graph again. Okay, copy this graph again. I then relax, relax thing on it. Okay, so I already know the dimension of tangent vector is r prime i. So r prime prime is v here. R prime pi. We find that this is equal to minus j plus k. Okay, minus j plus k here. Yeah? So r prime pi is minus j plus k. Okay, actually prime prime here. So this direction is actually 
Em bác sơn không? Minus J plus K. Ok. So, what is the equation of the tangent line? So, somewhere now is the, the origin here. Ok. So, I join this one. So, here this R0. Ok. R0 to the point. What is that point? We can calculate this now. Is actually minus 1 0 pi. Ok. So, this point is P0 here. Ok. R0 is actually minus 1 0 pi. Okay, so if you want to find equation of this straight line, tangent line, okay, you want to find equation of tangent line, let's say this straight line here, continue. So you want to say, oh, where is the equation of this tangent line? Let's say I draw it here to the center, to the origin. This R T now. Okay, equation of tangent line is RT now. Okay, RT. So RT is equal to R0 plus TV. Okay, so this is R0 is minus 1, 0, pi, V. In this case, is 0 minus 1, 1. Okay, got this 0 minus 1, 1. In terms of RJK. So this is your RT here, which can be, of course, equal to XT, YT, ZT. Okay, this is equal to minus 1 plus T dot 0, 0 plus minus 1t, okay, so add them up, huh? okay, add it. so you can actually add them up first. So this one is minus 1 here, this one is minus t here, and then this one is pi plus t. Okay, when you add them up, minus 1 plus 0, you get minus 1, uh, 0 plus minus t, you get minus t, pi plus 1t, you get pi plus t. So, in terms of parallel equation, you get this one. That means that your xt here is equal to 1. Minus 1, sorry. Your xt equal to minus 1. Your yt equals to minus t. Your zt equal to t plus pi. And this is the parametric equation of tangent line. Okay, so these are the main point. Okay, main point of this example. So let me see. Maybe I can WhatsApp to you, you to the this example. This is consider one complete example. Okay, so let me complete. This example for you, all right? So I'm going to make this example as a complete example first. So this is beginning. I'm going to find the tension vector and then I blow up, okay, to find the point for you. Okay, how do you read the graph? And then, how to calculate the equation of tangent line, especially the parametric equation, right? So, the one you have, this one is called the, the first one is actually called the vector equation, right? Vector equation of tangent line.
and then the last one you get is the parametric equation of tangent line. So I mean, if it's this one, Okay, so this is example two. So just to find the equation of tangent line and of the curve. So this is example two. Okay, so unless you have any question, I'll move on to example, example three. Let me wait for anybody who still want to copy and this and what's up to you, Woody. Okay, so this is minus one. Okay, so this is uh, one of the easier example, but most complete example. Okay, next example will be slightly harder now. We are going to find the angle between two tangent lines. Okay, a lot of revision of what you do in AM2. Okay. okay, example three, you have two curves, R1 and R2. Okay, they, they tell you that the two curves, okay, they give a move at your time, and they say that these two graphs intersect at origin. But this is important because it tell you when it intersect. Okay, then the question asks you to find the degree measure of the acute angle between the tangent line to the car intersect at the origin. So they want to find at the origin the angle. They want the angle now between the two tangent line. Okay between the two tangent line because why I get two tangent line because two curve one curve or one tangent line okay two curve the two tangent line now they want to find angle between them now so this is a lot of am2 in application so there are two curve okay let's try to figure out when these two curve intersect do they intersect at the same time or cross the path only Okay, we can get, let's see what happened to the graph. So I'm going to anyhow draw the graph here. Okay, I have what, two graph. Let's say this is the first graph, R1. Okay, let's say this is the second graph. Let's say R2, direction R1, R2. Okay. So R1 and R2 are two graphs. So R represents the position of the point along the graph, R1. Okay, R1, R2. Okay, they intersect and origin given to you already. So this point is origin here. The point is just the origin here. Origin means zero, zero, zero. Okay, origin means okay. So the question is, at what time the first graph passes origin? Okay, at what time the first graph passes origin? So first graph is x equal to tangent inverse t, right? And then y equal to sine t, z equal to t square. Okay, t square, only k, huh? So this t square, this is the first graph on r1. Okay, now r1, the x equal to tangent inverse t, and y over sine t, J equal t square. I want it at the origin. So they put in origin one. Zero. Zero. Okay, if you put it like that, what is happened to t now? So you set the equation and solve. You get that t is equal to 
زيرو اوكي صاف تي يا فاين اوكي يو صاف ذيس تي ذا يو فاين ذا اوكي دو ني تي ذا ساتيسفاي اول ذا كونديشن يا تي يكو زيرو سو ذات مينز ذا at this point we are going to find interested is actually if we move the curve this way this line tangent direction is r prime one at zero okay direction of this tangent line we know that r, r prime is always tangent to the curve at which point now the t is equal to zero okay so r1 prime at zero is tangent to the curve at the origin. Then how about the other one? R2 prime. R2 now. You have x equal to t square minus t, y equal to 2t minus 2, z equal to ln t. At the origin, you want it to be 0. Solve this simultaneous equation. Okay, you solve this simultaneous equation. What is actually your x y t now? T squared minus t equals zero. Two t minus two equals zero, and long t equals zero. So you solve, you get that. Okay, you get long t equals zero. What is t equal to now? So t equal to one. Okay, the only what the only way. You get all zero is a t equal to one. So what does that mean? That means the second curve, when it passes the origin, is at time t equal to one. So when I do the second curve, when it passes the origin, this is r two prime at one. Okay. So these two curves actually does not collide. If we have a collision, collision means they meet together at the same time, at same point. This is a collision. Same time, same location, this is collision. But this time is not collision on that. Actually pass the cross, pass the same point at different time. Okay, so that's why this is not a really collision, just a happen to be they pass each other at different time. And what the question one is actually find angle between them. So I want this angle. Okay, basically they want this angle. This is how question three all about. Okay, they first of all understand when they are when it intersect at origin, when is it happen? So the first graph is happen at t equal to zero. On the second graph, happen at t equal to one. So this is not really collision here. It means they don't actually go to the same point at the same time. So they actually go to the same point at different time. Okay, this is the first. How do you understand the question? Okay, now let's try to understand how to find R1 prime zero. Okay, so next slide, I'll show you how to do R1 prime zero here. So I copy this part here. So let me copy this one. Next page now. So I know. R1 T. Okay, if we copy this one, is tangent inverse T I plus sine T J plus T square. Okay, this is the first R1, right? So I differentiate now R1 from T. So you must now know how to differentiate tangent inverse t. So uh, using the formula, if you differentiate tangent inverse t, you get one over 
1 plus t squared, which you can get from integration formula. So this is actually 1 over 1 plus t squared i. Okay, differential sign t, we know is cosine t, so no, no issue that is too common already. Differential sign t, the cosine t. And then differential t square, you get 2t. Okay, and we want to find r prime of zero because the first curve past origin, you can see that first curve past origin when t equals zero, right? So we want to find r prime zero here. So you get one over one plus zero square i cosine zero j and two times zero k. So this is actually i plus j cosine zero is one. Okay, cosine zero is one here. And then two times zero, of course, is zero, right? So no issue, it's zero. So this is actually I plus C plus zero, right? So actually, it's actually one, one, zero. Okay, so this is for first curve. I find the tension to the graph is this one. Now second curve, R2 now. Okay. R2 T. So this is R1. Just now was R1 there. So I'm going to show that here. One here. Okay. R2 T. You get T squared minus T here. T square minus T times I plus 2T minus 2 times J plus ln T K. So we do differentiation R2 prime T. So this one you get 2T minus 1 now, 2T minus 1. And then this two now divided to the zero. And then this one is differentiate log t, the one over t. And then you put r two prime at one. Okay, why one here? Because we are interested to find the r two prime at one. Okay, so make make sure there's one now. You get two t. 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1 now. Plus 2j. Plus 1. K. So this is actually the vector. 1, 2, 1. Okay. This is just 1, 1, 0. So there are actually two calculations here. Finding the tangent vector. Okay, then you write the two calculation here. Right, two calculation here. One as well as R1 prime zero, the other one is R2 prime one. So I have find the two tangent vector now. What they want is the angle between them. Okay, they did not ask you to find the tangent line in this case, right? But the degree measure, they did not ask you to find the tangent line. So we need to worry what is the equation of the line now. Okay, and then we want to know what is angle between two vector.
OK. So now let's find the anchor between two vector now. So this one you have to recall how to find the anchor between two vector. So let me copy this graph again to show you how to copy the anchor between two vector. And then copy. And for here now, how do I find angle? So let's say this angle, this is a vector A here. I want to use the, this guy, this vector A here. This one is vector B here. Okay, so I have two vectors here. Okay, so let me use the color to show you the two vectors. So this vector here, okay, the vector. What is anchor between them? Okay, so how do you find the vector anchor between them? There's a vector is called a dot product here. You say that if you do a dot b, this is we call definition of dot product. It's actually length of a, length of b cosine theta. Okay, a dot b is equal to length of a, length of b cosine theta, which you learn in a and m2. And a, we found out that this is a vector minus, okay, the vector a is how much is that? 1, 1, 0. Okay, 1, 1, 0 here. And this is my 1, 0. B is actually one to one. Okay, B is actually one to one, right? Yeah. Okay, so this one definition. So this is length of A. Length of A is what now? A is one one zero. So length of A is actually square root of one square plus 1 square, plus 0 square. Length of B is 1 square, plus 2 square, plus 1 square. And then cosine theta. The theta we don't know, is it? Why is that there? So find out there. This is actually 2. 4 plus 5 is 6. Cosine theta. OK, this is one equation. Now, there's another definition of scalar vector product. Uh, this is called dot product here. Dot product. Or also called scalar product here. So, you also have A dot B is actually A1, B1, plus A2, B2, plus A3, B3. So this is equal to, you can use it here. Okay, I'm using them. So one and one, get to one. Okay, one here. A2 now, I can use this one. One and two, go together. One plus two here. And then finally, I can use the blue one. Let's say it's zero and one. Okay, zero and one. So you get actually one plus two times zero is three. You go into both of them are top product. Okay, both of them are top product here. Yeah? So they must be equal the two different way of two top product here. Yeah? So I have a square root two, basically square root two, square root six, cosine theta is equal to 3. Okay, 1 and 2 must equal here. So you can press the calculator and find out what is this anchor now. Okay, so cosine theta 3 over square root 12. Okay, 
Uh, so you, you make sure your computer in the remote first. So she set up the remote first. Okay, three of us got a 12, right? So you can get a uh, cosine inverse, uh, square root of three over square root 12. Okay, something is wrong there. Very strongly. At 30 degree. Okay, there is an angle between these two vector from here. So answer we get 30 degree. Right. So this is how you answer the question example two. Number three, okay, it's number three. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, let me just now that's number three, right? Let me see what I like in view. Okay, that's number three. Uh, no, I think I got this already, so I did it. This one I give you already. So this one is the one missing. Okay, so these are the part of differentiation. Okay, all about differentiation. I show you example one, two, three. All about the translation application, how to find the equation of tangent line, how do you find the, the direction of tangent line, how to find the angle between two tangent line. All about vector. Last time we learned in TNM2, we got this thing. Now let's put them into practice. So now I'm going to move on to integration. Okay, integration is the opposite of differentiation. Okay, opposite in the first one. The the application will be very different. Okay, what is integration there? So let me uh, stop for a while first. I want to stop the video because otherwise it will be too long. So I start the video first. Otherwise, I'll be doing it too long.